I'm making that state. It, 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 I had to kind of put it that way so I can kind of explain it. So that way you have to pay attention. So when it don't make sense, it makes sense. Are y'all with me now? See, now, here something occurs. Uh, let's go down to verse uh, uh, 13. Go ahead, you verse 13 for me, Sue, please. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? Mm -hmm. And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. Now, he's talking to Gideon, the angel here of the Lord, and there's a problem. The angel declares a viewpoint because the viewpoint is coming from God's perspective. So God doesn't look at your evaluation of yourself and your circumstances and does uh, and because of your evaluation he said that's what it is no god looks and sees he looks at you and sees what he can create out of you that's why so when 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 the angel res you know he re you know when the angel makes a statement he says how because he's speaking for god so i don't know about you but i want god to of me better than my own evaluation of my own self. Uh, can I get an amen? amen? See, you're always going to think lower than where God is. God always wants you to go up higher. He talks about making us the head and not the tail. The head makes the decision, the tail follows. I'm tired. When you get tired of following, then you'll be ahead. Now, he, God turns around. He said, He looks at him. Now, here I'm trying to bring Gideon, but I'm talking about you today. So lock the door. Ain't nobody run out today. I'm talking about all y'all up in here today. Okay? He's saying to you, I see things about you that you don't see about yourself. How dare you call yourself such and such, and God didn't call you? Quitter, cheater, can't make it, depressed. Why? How dare you talk about God's creation? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Maybe I'm in the wrong crowd. Do I got creation, God's creation in the house? How? So watch this now. We got the audacity to tell the creator how we really are. And our evaluation of ourselves is based on the situations that we've had in life. Mm. I've had it hard, okay? Sometimes the hardness that you've had was to develop the character because you yourself is pretty tough. But we're not going to talk about that. You sit with me now. So here he's talking about Gideon again. And, and, and okay, he hears God's viewpoint of him uh, or God's evaluation of himself because I don't know about you, but I'd rather God evaluate me than I evaluate myself, you know. And, 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 and after he says that, and, and he goes into the statement, he said, and he makes this consideration, if God be for us, then why is all this stuff happening to us? Now, you're going to, you have to get some background knowledge a little bit. What happened to Midianites? The, Midian, the Midianites is what I call a spirit that don't want you to have nothing. The Midianites were a band or descendants of Abraham's second wife, Katrina, Kitra, Kitra and they, they were scattered around the neighborhood. So what they would do, they were raiders. So they wait till you have something, they come in and raid you in your spiritual walk. It seemed like you almost got there, and it's like it snatched away from you. Like God took, God didn't take it. Those Amorites took it. I'm sorry, the Midianites took it. So many enemies, uh, but <laughs> Midianites. The Midianite, the spirit of a Midianite steals from God's children. But how does the enemy have the right to steal from the church? 
What is it? Matter of fact, it's always in the scriptures. Our problem, watch this, is not a problem that we can't solve. Let's go up to verse number, uh, we're in chapter 6. Let's go up to verse number 1 and uh, pick up this read. Here, we're going to look and find, I'm going to show you, look here biblically from the scriptures where the problem is. If you read the whole thing of Judges, you understand, but can I preach it and you can study it later. See, because uh, Gideon is stuck in a situation that he's been living. He's had to hide stuff. He's hiding in the wine press. So yet, when he was trying to uh, press, uh, gain anything, they had to hide it. Because if they didn't hide it, they would, uh, the Midianites would steal the sheep. The, they would steal the oil. They would steal the donkeys. They, 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 they took everything. They left you hungry, busted, disgusted, and can't be trusted. Are y'all still with me? So now, okay, all of this is happening. Why? That's what I want to deal with a little bit. Why is all this happening? What happened? Okay, now, let's first look at this first answer right here. Go ahead, read it. And the children of Israel mm -hmm. did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Median, not in, into the hand of Median seven years. Now, how long was was the, the was they in the control of the Midianites? Seven, Seven years. years. So God says, "Listen, because we 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 have the wonderful privilege of being able to look back at what was going on back then." So the duration of the period was a total of seven years. I don't know how long you've been in something, and them them uh, <laughs> the Midianites been after you. And it feel like, just like you finna make it, and they snatch it from you. Yeah, am I talking wrong? Am I talking right? I've had the sense of almost getting to that point and it being taken from you. You're about to get the promotion and they give it to somebody else instead of you. The day is ending where you're, where you're going to be missed. It's your turn now. Said it's your turn now. You're not going to miss this, what God has got for you. As a matter of fact, your name is on it. That means it's only for you. Y'all not talking to me. Uh. Well, you just preach. Well, okay, check this out. Why don't you just receive what I'm saying and see if it works? Because you think I'm just preaching because I'm the preacher. No, I, I'm not. I am here to give y'all a message. I am the mailman from heaven. Y'all ain't talking to me. Yes. <laughs> I'm delivering something that I got from God to give to you, his people. Are you going to take it or what? Yes. You know, we got, we got a package from Amazon the other day and, you know, go out there. We love it when Amazon delivers something. You know, we love, you know, we order it and everything. Oh, we love it. Now I'm telling you about what God has delivered to me to bring to you and you ain't, you ain't happy. So Amazon gets the praise, but... Hello, praise God. So we find the problem here that is noted it, it, right away. It said the, the issue of why the, uh, why the Midianites are in control is because Israel or the people of God have messed up. Hello? So your mess up, watch this now. Your, your mess up has caused... The blessing of God to stop. Instead of it flowing, it has to cease. It's capped up. It, it, it can't get through to you. It's almost like outside it was raining. And, uh, and I was like, wow, I got to, since it's raining, I grab my hat and grab my, my jacket because it's raining. I got I to gotta protect myself. I got to cover myself. I don't want to get all wet. See, you have no covering and you're exposed, this is what your sin will do for you. It will expose you, watch this, to some bad weather. Oh, yeah. Or what they call inclement weather. Huh? How long are you going to stay in the rain? Oops. Aren't you wet up enough? Okay, this is okay. Let me get back here. 
So now let, let's go a little further. Let's go back to chapter. Let's go back. Well, we're in chapter six. Let's go on down. Let's get back to chapter verse number 12. Okay. Uh, verse number 12, right? Mm -hmm. Now, go ahead and read verse number 12 over from there. I can start to pick this up. Mm -hmm. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him mm -hmm. and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. The Lord is what? With thee. Okay. G uh, Gideon is confused. Because he said, if the Lord with me, then how come all this other bad stuff is happening to me? Right. You know, we talk about... Uh, the, uh, Trust the Lord all by heart. Lean. Okay, if I'm trusting, then why is all this happening? Maybe I'm. Uh, Y'all, where's our. Wait a minute. Now. If God for me, then I know God is always looking out for my. Then why I got to deal with all this other stuff if God be for me? Yeah. Can I answer the question today? Do I got any people asking that same question? If all, if God is so good and we call him the saint, he's the great God, he's the mighty God, why am I going through all this hell and ain't got to hell? Well, maybe I'm talking to the wrong people. See? Change won't come until you decide to make it come. Now, can I go a little further now? Okay, let's switch over to, uh, let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 10 and verse 38. Now, the point now, keep there and stay there in Judges. Keep your hand in Judges. We're going to go back in Judges chapter 6, and we're, gonna, we're at verse 12 right now. And uh, we will be moving down a little bit. But let's go to Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. But we're going to come back to Judges. Y'all with me now? So y'all can flow with me a little bit preaching. All right. Now, again, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Now, remember the point that I'm making to bring to you or the focus point that I want you to see is that the statement that, he, that the angel had made that God is with Gideon. Now, let's take out Gideon's name and let's put your name in there. Say this to me, God is with me. Okay, now, if God is, now, that's a statement that has to be proven. How, how many know the proof is in the pudding? You can talk, you can, I mean, there's a whole lot of people talk about God with them. Okay, God with you, but I, but we don't see no evidence of it. Oh, but I'm about, oh, I just got, I, I got a, uh, a email right quick. Let me go and put it back on my computer. Yes. I'm about to show you some things that's going to startle you. You're going to finally be able to see <laughs> the opportunities that are right before you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. I'm not talking about traps of the devil. I'm talking about opportunities that God has prearranged for you to experience. Beautiful. Beautiful. I just got that email. I did. Uh, Thank you, Lord, for the email, because they may not, but I Hallelujah. thank you for it. Thank you, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Now, again, chapter 10. Let's go back to Acts chapter 10, and uh, we can flow from there. All right, verse 38. Go ahead, please. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth mm -hmm. with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. For God was what? One of the proofs that God is with you is that you are a dangerous person to the devil. You are a troublemaker to evildoers. Evil don't like you. 
because you know how to do good. God has empowered you because sometimes to do good for some of us, you know, we need some power. Are y'all still with me? Okay. We, so he said, I'm going to empower you to do some good. I'm empowering you to forgive that, that individual that's not forgivable. I'm going to empower you or enable you to love some unlovable people. A matter of fact, God want to take care. Uh, I said it before and I want to say it to you again. God want to take care of your mistakes. You are, you are so engaged in your self-effort with your, with your mistakes that you are missing the blessing that God is trying to show you in the midst of the situation. You have to keep going over the process because you won't learn the lesson. Can I go a little deep out here? There are things that I'm trying to teach you. The reason why the repeat keeps coming is because you have not learned or grasped the lesson. Okay. What kind of lesson are you talking about, preacher? Okay. How about this? Have you learned yet to, when you make a decision or you decide something that you have to do uh, or something, something that you want to do and it involves another person, have you considered it may, number one, is it good for you? Okay. But is it good for them? Wait a minute, y'all. Wait a minute. No, it ain't good. It's not good for them. I was talking with a, a brother the other day. We were talking, and he said he had a friend, and, and they were playing video games. And the friend made a statement and said how that, you know, he wanted to borrow one of the, the games that y y all know little games and they, they have it there. So he wanted to borrow it. And he, he thought about it. He said, to keep our friendship, y'all not talking to me, to keep our friendship, it would not be good for me to let you take this on and borrow it. See, y'all been borrowing stuff you can't afford. <laughs> you knew you couldn't afford it because you only got one. And, and watch this. You were enjoying the one, but they want to take away their joy. You enjoyed it too much. So watch out for people who won't take away your joy. So in order to keep, see, you ain't thinking that way. In order for me to keep this friendship, this would not be a good decision. Even though it's a no, but really it's to protect my future. My future relationship with you. See, y'all got to understand, I got to keep my relationships intact. My, 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 my determining factor of my decision is, is, is watch this now. After I do this, what will happen afterwards? I, matter of fact, I've got to start thinking uh, about consequences. See, you know, people don't think about consequences. Now, now see, when you get a consequential thinker, thinker around you, people may not like him, but I tell you what, they're always steady, and they'll always be the one you go ask them the questions. Why? Because they make good decisions that they're... Oh, wait a minute. I, I, I'm after your regret card today. I want you to come out the regret crew. Hello? Some decisions, some things you have to think, wait a minute, this might not be a good decision. Some people that, some of the people that say your friend, it might not be good to be friends with them. Just because they say your friend, don't mean it's good to be a friend to them. No, y'all just, y'all just, y'all with me now? See, I've got, to, I've got to now make some decisions because I don't know about y'all, but I'm older and I want to get wiser. And so in order to work in wisdom, I got, to, I got to use my brain and think about things. I've got to weigh my actions. I've got to weigh my words. I, because, see, it's not a good decision. It may look right. Watch this. There's a way that seems right onto man, but the end thereof is the way of death. It may seem right, but it won't be right. I'm talking to somebody up in here today. It may seem right, but I'm telling you, it's not right. I've got to be able to see beyond the cover. I got, I got this beautiful car, but I got it covered up. I want to buy the car, but I, you know, I haven't seen it in a long time, but it looked good at the time. 
so I want to take the cover off of it, and I want to look in the car and find out the engine isn't working. Well, what happened? Because you don't have enough information to make a proper evaluation. You're <laughs> you you seeing it from the surface and not from the root or the, watch this, the success is in the details. The success is in what the, the I need to know the details of this contract I'm finna go into with you. Well, I'll try it. Yeah, the, the, See, the details is what we overlook or we bypass. Well, he ain't really that bad of a person. Okay, until you start bump, bumping your head. Hello. See, okay. Hallelujah. God's good, isn't he? Okay. Now, uh, let's go. Now, let's go back to our base. Go back to Judges again. Chapter 6 and verse 13 now. Now, let's go into 13. Now, look at some, some things here. Read verse 13 for me. And Gideon said unto him, mm -hmm. O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, mm -hmm. why then is all this befallen us? Mm -hmm. And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us, and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. So therefore, and we're in this miracle series, and you say, well, I, I ain't had no miracles. We saw last week we had, uh, we had witnesses of miracles taking place, but I ain't had none. Well, number one, you're next in line. Number two, see, God hadn't forgotten you. But you, you too far away for him to get to you. You know, you can, you can hide from people. <laughs> Man, you, you know, you can, you can fake it, but not with God. If you're going to walk in integrity, in sincerity, watch as God is going to use you to a greater capacity than what you have already experienced. You think you've made it already. You have not made it to the point where God wants to bring you. Maybe I'm... Uh, uh, how many of y'all want change? Come on now. Now, our, we had our former president, which was the only black president of this United States of America, and which is, uh, what's his name? What was Barack, Barack Obama. Okay. So that, that brother ran the U.S. for eight years. Now, how did he even get to that? Well, one of the things that he's so infamous of is his speech about change. He ran that ticket his first term and his second term about change. Something's about to break because you're going to understand what change is. Can I talk to you a little bit, Don? Now, if you want, how many of y'all want stuff to change? Okay, watch this. He said, can I, can I take the president's statement? I understand the Bible is greater and, and the Bible is more, but we can take from some human aspects too. So we're going to grab from him because I don't know about it. He was the top man among in the U.S. running. You know, it, it, you know, they say the black man can't do that. Okay, but we had one running the whole joint. Well, you know, the particulars. No, I don't care what happened, but he was there. I'm not going to say he did this and did that, but he was there. Let's, let's worry about all the little details later, but let's just get there first. 
he made a statement that I, I found it outstanding. He said, change will not come if we, <laughs> if, if we, if we for some reason or for some, some thought think that it's coming from other people or coming from another time. It's not coming from other people. It's not coming from other times. So okay, since it's not not it's not someone else that's gonna bring me a change, and I'm not waiting for the time for a change, then I may have to deal with what I have. Oh, can I get an answer to it? Okay. okay. He said, he said, we are the ones <laughs> we've been uh we've been waiting for. We are the ones, we are the change we have been looking for. <laughs> you are your own change. <laughs> you, <laughs> Carol Burnett, I don't know what's up here. Carol Burnett said, she made this statement, I, I like it. Said, she said, uh, only I can change my life. No one can do it for me. Please catch that part, what I said. No one can do it, what? For you. Now you can stop trying to make people. You've been harassing them to change. Now how you... <laughs> yeah, let's, look at that. let's look at that logic. I'm going to make you do good. You, you think God's the same way. I'm going to make you do right. I'm going to put you in situations so you got to do right. You really good, huh? Can't nobody change but you. What the frustration that's present, even if they start changing a little bit in the right way, is too slow for you. See, sometimes the Bible says, wait on the Lord, <laughs> wait on and be encouraged. So wait a minute. Sometime waiting, we're not wor we're not worried about the time continuum, not just you know hours, minutes, years. We, what? Wait a minute. Check. It's decisions that we make in moments. We make decisions in what? In moments. The moments make the difference because you will go where your thoughts. Go. You'll follow. The rest of your body will follow your thinking. That's why the first change, you're going to have to change your mind. We were just talking about repentance. You, you ain't going, you can talk about you, I won't change. Hallelujah, change. And you keep talking, change, breathe, change, look, change. But until you do change, you won't get none. I'm ready for a financial I, I found out something. You ain't, your, your finances ain't going to change until you start stop spending the money you spend right now. You, you ain't even in. That's not Mr. Obama, but it's me talking to you. You're going to have to get a hold. Uh, while we're watching and can grade everybody else, the hardest person to grade is ourselves. See, we don't, we, 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 we always give ourselves a good grade. Even though it may not be a, a right evaluation. Now, <laughs> see, I've got to, I've got to take time. Mm. He said, watch and pray. Watch. Who am I watching? I'm not watching f other people for other circumstances. I'm watching me. You don't watch you. You need a security system around the way you're thinking. We got to call ADT. You need, you need to be monitored. <laughs> a whole monitoring system for you. See, until I change the way I'm thinking. <laughs> oh. Okay. Can I go a little further? 
there's another problem. Here's, can I talk about this, this, this next problem? And I don't know if y'all can catch this. I don't want to call it. Um, this problem is called poverty of um, ambition. Write that down. Poverty of ambition. In other words, poverty means lack. We all got that right? Okay, now, we got the lack part. Okay, now, ambition, watch this. Can we all say ambition? Could we also put it like determination? Or so a lack of determination may be the, the reason why we can't get a change. Are, are you with me now? It, it, it's, it, it's, it's not those things. It's this thing. If I'm, watch this. I'm going to go into an office, a uh, government office, and uh, here comes the vote. The vote's tied, but I haven't put my vote in. And because I believe the other guy is going to win, I, I don't even vote on my stuff. I vote on them. I'm going to lose anyway. How can <laughs> you ain't even got started? And you ain't even giving yourself. You won't vote for you. Huh. Some people want to control your thinking, even if it's thinking. Mm-hmm. Y'all are not with me. I like this one. Watch this. This was an unknown writer made this statement here. He said, in order to change, we must. We what? We must. We must be sick and tired of being sick and tired. I feel good now. <laughs> I've got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Because watch this. You, you figure somebody doing something wrong, you figure they're going to get tired. No, no they're just going to take a nap and pick their energy back up. They're not going to be tired. Energy bunches keep on going <laughs> over and over. See, until you're tired of something, you won't change it. When you, watch this, not only are you tired, but you aren't sick yet. It's not affecting you yet. You're exhausted, but you can get your, you get your second wind. Y'all ain't talking to me. But now there's a disease taking a hold of you. You, you, hey. When you finally say, hey, that's enough. I, uh -uh, I ain't give you no more money. Well, baby, why are you not doing like you used to do? Because I'm sick and tired of what I've been doing. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me get back here where it's safe. Until I get sick and... What's all the change? What's, what's the new attitude? Well, I finally made up my mind. I, I, I've been... Watch this. I've been thinking about it. But I've moved from thinking, and now I have concluded. I've evaluated, and now this is my final decision. See, I haven't got to my final decision yet. They're talking about their change. What happened? What happened now? Now, let me, uh, can I, let me get, bring in this other point. Uh, still talking about change. Um, Let's go here to the book of James chapter to find out another problem, why change isn't going to come. Uh, because, uh, and remember, I'm talking about you today. Let's look here, the book of James chapter 4, and uh, let's go here to verse, uh, verse 17, because the reason for change is because you are, you believe Let's read it. Go ahead and read it for me first, and then I'll preach it. 
Therefore, mm -hmm. to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Read that again for me, please. Therefore, mm -hmm. to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Now you know what to do. Oh, really? Reverend, I don't know what to do. Oh, 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 oh. Let's, let's park that park, park that car. Oh, so no, you can't you got to stop. You can't collect two two hundred dollars. Put you right on the monopoly game. Okay. Everybody, even if they know something, they're not because we have some innocence. Come on, yeah. can I we're innocent, but you were innocent until you got saved. Even beyond even just being saved. God has put in us an apparatus called a conscience that is the umpire of the heart that tells you if something's right or something wrong. You, that's why I say, I, I don't know what it is, but I just feel something ain't right. I'm washing my feet with my socks still on. And I'm wondering what's the problem. Well, hallelujah. <laughs> See, you know, I know to do right, but I just haven't made my mind up to be right. And can I, see, as long as we blame everybody else, we'll never change. This one guy I know, he, he, he was thinking about getting saved, and uh, he, uh, matter of fact, well, he was getting saved, and he had a whole other group of people that were going get, to get saved with him. Then come to find out the day of it, all of them except for him bailed out. When you're alone, what goes on in your mind? So he went on and got saved anyway. Because he already had made that decision before the day came. See, you're going to have to decide something, some things before the situation shows up. Ooh, we're talking real. If you, you, see, there's, there's some principle. Uh, I'd rather, can we say, I want to be a person that lives by principles. And the principles that I make, I don't want to also break. Yeah, yeah. See, some of y'all have overcome some things already, but can I talk, can I put a pause right there? Full stop, pause right there. I used to want to quit, but now instead of, let's go to Galatians right here. I think it's in the book Galatians it talks about See, if I rebuild that which I once destroyed, the Bible said I become a transgressor. I think it's chapter 2. There are uh, Galatians chapters. I thought I had that. Uh, Galatians chapter 2. Uh, God's good. Give me a minute. Okay, look. Now, let's look at this because watch this. See, the reason why change isn't taking place is right here. Go ahead and read that for me. For if I build again mm -hmm. the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Read that one more time again. Now, now please pay good attention. Now, now notice it didn't specify what it was, but it is something. So that means everybody in here got to be careful lest they rebuild something that they said that they wouldn't do anymore. Am I? Y'all yeah. still here in the house? Yeah. Okay. I got to talk to a state of me. Doggone, I love y'all. Okay. Go ahead. For if I build again mm -hmm. the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. And I know that it's wrong. Watch this. You can't even, you know, some, some issues are going to stay with you because watch this. It's already, God has already delivered you from it, 
But you keep going back to it. That's that's why you can't change. You, <laughs> I'm already two steps ahead, but I keep on falling back into the same situation. Okay. How can I put it this way? <laughs> if, oh, I make. Can I make it simple? If I if I like me some some liquor. You know, uh, not, you know, some, what's that? You know, some nice liquor. That's a young, you know, some, y'all, why y'all looking? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Some nice liquor, okay? I ain't talking about cheap stuff, I'm, you know. What's that, Cardi, it was, uh, I mean, I ain't gonna, I don't know the brand. <laughs> you got that, all right? Okay, what you know. But, and your friendship is determined on the price of liquor that they buy or you buy. Because if you buy it at that, that cognac, at, oh, ooh, wow. I'm sorry. At, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You buy it at that level, that we can hang because you, 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 uh, you, you got some money. You put some, you, you got some quality to this friendship. You ain't got no cheap stuff. <laughs> Boone's Farm and all this. And this stuff. All right, God's good, isn't he? <laughs> Change. Can I say something to help you? I don't know. I, I, can I say something? I'm not just preaching to you about change. I'm preaching to me. I'm looking. I, I'm, man, I'm like a hundred dollars looking for a bone. I won't. You got to start watching you. Yeah. I've said it already, but I'm reiterating again. You got to watch you. You want to lose weight, but keep going to the donut shop. Y'all not, uh, you keep going to get donuts, but <laughs> you talking about, I ain't talking about you, I'm talking about the donuts you picking up. It's not you, it's the donuts doing you. But watch this now. You picked up the donuts, I didn't pick the donuts up. So if you just keep, instead of stopping, bypass the donuts, and weight loss will be no problem. Some things were about to come off. I like that. It's, it's, it's not going to take that long. The problem is you haven't made up your mind. You haven't made up your mind. Nothing's going to happen until you do that first. With every head bowed and every eye closed, because you've been talking about you going to get saved for those that are, are streaming in to us by the way of media. And you, you know, you, you are going to get saved the first of the year. You're going to be saved after the second of the year. And right now, I, I, it's we're already at the halfway point. You still ain't saved. How long is it going to take for you to make up your mind? You want to change, but you don't want to make up your mind. Jesus has already paid the price for you and I, but he's waiting for you to change your mind. A matter of fact, change it in correspondence to his way of thinking. See, just being saved is not just, I'm just saved. Wait a minute now. There's some change that needs to come and follow that change. Confession is one thing, but you got you got you to do something now to, to establish that change. Come on, somebody say establish change. 
my brother, my sister that's here. Jesus has done that. And I want to lead you in a prayer right now because this is for now. That's going to change your life for later. But you have to make that decision now today. Well, you pressure. No, I don't have to pressure anything. You don't have to do anything. But you got to make up your mind in order to free. Because God want to, he want to do some miraculous things for you and with you. But he needs you to work with him, with God. With God, all things are possible. You don't know my circumstance situation, preacher. Thank you. I may not, you're right, I may not know that, but I know God. And I know God can change it. And I know that he will help you to change it if you let him. My brother, my sister, say this for me. Lord Jesus, I come to you right now just as I am. I ask you to forgive me for my sins that I have committed against you. Wash my heart. Make me clean. Come into my heart. Oh God, receive me. I give myself to you. I thank you for receiving me. I believe this with my heart and I speak this with my mouth and now I believe that I'm saved. Thank you, Lord. Come on and give God a great big hand.